90s taking on UNZ. Of course, UNZ on the left-hand side of the Legion team. The 90s as the Hellborn side. Interesting note on that. The 90s did win the role, and they chose to stick with Hellborn. So we've been talking about that a little bit. How it seems like we're having a little bit of back and forth after winning the role. Usually it was always Hellborn, but of course with the lockpick mode, with you getting really two of those first picks, uh, Legion has been popular lately as well. So, uh, But the 90s choosing Hellborn. We see the blind bands taking place. Ophelia and Tundra for the Legion team. And then Tundra and Silhouette, actually, for the 90s. So, blind bands here, nothing too crazy? Well, again, I always think it's crazy when Legion bans Tundra as a blind band. Or if they also ban uh, Pebbles. One thing that I will say, though, is 90% of the time, the Hellborn team will ban Tundra. So, sometimes you can use that and, and get more, like, top-tier or god-tier heroes onto the pool by banning the same exact thing. And that's yeah. actually use as you know that's actually a viable strategy. So if you know that, if you know they're going to ban Tundra, you're like, well, I'm just going to waste a ban then on Tundra so I can get better heroes in the pool since I do have two first picks. So uh, maybe he did that, um, but yeah, sometimes it's just like you don't want to ban Tundra because what if they don't ban Tundra, then you get a free Tundra. So, uh, but the other ones, uh, Ophelia, you know, he he told us right in the interview that he yeah. he knows that they like that early aggression from Ophelia, so we went ahead and banned that. And then, you know, nothing too too odd with the silhouette ban. Yeah. Again, that team's doing the research here, as uh, we heard so well in that uh, pregame. So um, we have the locking phase taking place here. Glacius being the first lock from UNZ, followed up by Aluna, Master of Arms, and then Bubbles, Rhapsody. So a couple of interesting locks so far. Of course, that being Master of Arms and Rhapsody here. Uh, Rhapsody is a fun support hero, and uh, it would be uh, interesting to see her. She's definitely kind of a, you know, the big team fight changer if she gets a good ultimate off in those team fights, uh, of course, with it being channeled. But uh, we have seen some turnaround moments with her. But it finishes off with Polywog Pre. So uh, you definitely got a strong hero, a locking hero here with a couple of little bit oddballs with Master of Arms and Rhapsody, like I said, but still overall a strong lock pool. Yeah, and I keep thinking right now, I'm like, oh, my God, they could actually, 90s could actually run their 90s uh, strategy. Because there's Glacius and Polywog in the pool. <laughs> that means if they picked, yeah. uh, if they picked Pharaoh Tree and Vindy here, <laughs> and then they went Poly and Glacius. That's How awesome it. That they could do it. I know. I'm just. I want it so badly. <laughs> how awesome would that be? After you know, just talking about it, how it's like, oh, we just can't run it anymore. People know how to do it. It's like all of a sudden they just busted out here in game number one. Um, <laughs> again, both these teams are 0 one. This is a big series for these two teams here in Group yeah. A. Uh, you do not want to start 0 and two. So. Uh, both these teams looking for a big win here in what is a very, very solid overall Group A team list. Uh, the bands, though, taking place. we got Parasite, Magmus, Moraxis, Pebbles, and Fade so far. Uh, with the final band coming up, you do see a Mage Bane and Dark Lady still on the board as far as uh, optional. And, you know, I wouldn't expect those to be one of those to be banned here simply because, you know, if UNZ takes one, maybe 90s would get the other because if they lock ban one, then probably just give it to UNZ. So we'll see, though. What the 90s decides to do here with the final ban. Yeah, it seems like a lot of teams are banning Fade lately. Maybe this is the the new flavor of the month, so yeah. to speak. You know, don't get me wrong, Fade's a great hero, but uh, it seems like everyone is banning Fade, or running him at least, you know? Yeah, yeah we've seen her play support, we've seen her play as more of the snowballing style, I mean, we've seen her banned, as you put it, so, but there you go, Mage Bane is going to mm. be banned, so UNC, the, the uh, door is now open for them to first pick Dark Lady here, even. If they want to go with that, one of those three hard carries that you put in Silhouette, Dark Lady, and Mage Band, but the other two being banned. Yep. Um, this is a good option for them. So we'll see what UNC decides to go with. And it, on more to that point, you know, if they plan on Rising, then obviously Dark Lady fits that very well. So sure enough, there you yep. go for, uh, for UNC. Good start. Yeah, I mean, definitely. They got the Dark Lady. The only thing I could see 90s doing by giving them a Dark Lady is picking something extremely cheesy like a Jerizaya and Nymphora. Yeah. Like, that would, that would be, like, maybe worth giving a Dark Lady for. I could see that. If they do something else, though, like, something more standard, like, say, Torture Cthulhu Fawn or something like that, I'd be like, nah, you should not have given them Dark Lady. Yeah. Or at least you shouldn't have banned Mage Bane, because then you can't take, like, or, like you said. <laughs> right. If uh, they go Keeper Vindy here. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Wouldn't that be something? So... Uh, the 90s, obviously, though, you know, with that band of Mage Bane again, you can almost, if I can assume it, then I would think that they could, too, that that first big Dark Lady is going to happen. So, um, there's Jerry Are we going to see? Okay, so it's going to be Tempest, but still, yeah. That's fine. 
I mean, that, that's a smart pick. All the junglers are pretty much banned, you know, except for Keeper, maybe uh, Legionnaire, but people don't really seem to run those heroes that much anymore. Electrician picked up right away. Um, he thought it was a counter to Jarazaya, simply because he can purge the repel, or the, sorry, the charm. Um, but, I don't know, um, like on paper that sounds like a great counter, but overall, I mean, just the hero in general of Jarazaya is so strong. The heal um, cast animation so quick. The damage as well as the um, massive amounts of heal that it provides is huge. Uh, so the, the hero is just amazing. Well, yeah, on that note, too, again, as you said, on paper it sounds like such a perfect counter. But, you know, when it comes to actually the scenarios, when it comes to actually the playing, it, it plays out differently most yeah. of the time. You know, in the sense that, obviously, you purge off a protective charm, all of a sudden Soul's Blessing is used. You don't have your purge to take that off of anyone. Exactly. So. Exactly. Uh, then you just can't get through that. So, yeah, it's it's still obviously a very powerful hero against him, but, yeah, you're right that maybe it is overdone a little bit too much in terms of, oh, Electrician's on the board. We cannot pick up Jerezaya. Um As you see in the 90s, you know, I'm very aware that Electrician's on the board, but they still went with Jerezaya. Uh feeling very comfortable that they can make it work. Behemoth, the last pick there in the picking stage for UNZ, and then Forsaken Archer to finish up for the 90s. So both sides, they, they have pretty pretty powerful lineups here. Yeah, and uh, Pablo Priest now picked up great hero. Uh, for like a solo mid there for you, uh, UNZ. Uh, 90s lineup is looking very familiar to me, actually. I remember playing against this uh, before they ran a Tempest, Jerzy, and actually an FA. Uh, I don't remember what their other heroes. It was like maybe some other I would say Rhapsody heroes, like... here. This is a pretty strong push team, and Rhapsody can actually play that pretty well. But it is going to be a Luna, though. Okay, so. Yeah, Luna's. I, I was Dark. expecting a, a Luna or Glacius, actually. Um, a Luna's great just simply because the counter pushing. I mean,. You know, it's very obvious why Aluna's picked up almost every game. She's just such an all-around great hero. Yeah, so, yeah, obviously, obviously not surprised to see that there with the final pick. And then Glacius, of course, to finish things off for UNZ. So, um, as far as lanes, um, UNZ, I think we're going to see a tri-lane Dark Lady here with Behemoth Glacius and then Electrician mm -hmm. Polywog Solo. So, um, any idea on where we should expect to see this? Uh, probably Electrician Suicide Top. The pseudo uh, tri lane bottom with Dark Lady and then the Polywog mid. Um, for 90s, I would say Suicide Bubbles, Jerezaya mid, and FA. Uh, Bubbles and FA having some miscommunication there, it looks like. <laughs> Someone's got to move. Someone's got to move. Unless they all want to just get up there and protect the ward. That could yeah. be smart. But yeah, probably the Tempest in the jungle. Um, Jerezaya mid. Oh, Jerezaya going. Bottom, it looks like. So maybe Bubbles is going to sell them mid. That's interesting. But, uh, Jerzy also bought boots, and he's not going to sell them. He had uh, has gotten pulled some regen from uh, Mr. Phil McCunt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I was saying, Phil. Uh, yeah, that's actually a very interesting strategy here. Uh, of course, getting the boots, as you said, they're not going to sell them. You know what we do see sometimes? You buy the boots with a ward, and then you go down here as fast as possible. Right before it's about to expire for the selling point, you just sell it, and then you place the ward. But yeah, he's definitely going to keep the boots here, but... Having some regen from his team, and you see the Warder site going down right away. So, gonna have a vote to pause here. But look at the top lane, what's going on. Uh, we got a four versus four skirmish perhaps happening. And UNZ, in fact, they're gonna be running the tri lane top, it looks like. And actually, uh, Electrician's gonna be at the short lane bottom. Now, this is. Uh, this is gonna make a one versus one matchup at bottom, and we're gonna have a tri lane versus a pseudo tri lane up top here then. Yeah, and I think the, the most devastating thing is the fact that Jerzy did buy boots and. Now he's going to have to solo against the Electrician. And let me tell you, soloing against the Electrician when you're another melee is very, very hard. Yeah. And then you, you put on top of that, you have boots instead of so something like a hatchet and a shield. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit rough for Jerzy. He's not going to have the worst time in the world because he does have you know the strong heals. But he's got to be wondering, ah, oh, crap, I wish I would have yeah. meant something else than boots. Yeah, so, yeah, of course. So are you, are you saying he's probably, he was probably assuming that he's going to go against the tri-lane down here? Yeah, so, Okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah, but uh, UNZ, again, it looks like uh, doing something different here, going the tri-lane top instead, so catching them off guard. We'll see if any adjustments going to be made because of that. There is a courier up here. That is the Hellborn. Oh, no, the Legion one's here as well, so both couriers uh, spotting. Of course, the uh, UNZ's courier definitely seen that they're here, and we'll see if uh, Bubbles and Aluna perhaps maybe hanging around a little bit too much for the Legion team to catch them. Of course, again, all four of them here. They got a Fissure Stun to use from Behemoth, being played by Dowers. So if you can get that position, that could be danger, danger for the Hellborn setup here. So, um, but, so that's going to leave, uh, as we talked about the bottom lane, Jerezai versus Electrician. Middle lane, I guess it's safe to assume, Polywog Priest versus a Bubbles. How do you see that playing out? 
Well, it could also be a Forsaken Archer or Luna mid. Oh, yeah, uh, they, they haven't really moved around quite yet. I think it would be smart for them, actually, though, to um, to completely switch it up and go, you know, pseudo tri lane bottom with F.A. Luna. Oh, and then, oh no. my god, the Legion Courier died. The, the Legion Courier has died. But oh my god. Forsaken Archer actually in a lot of trouble. If they get a Bloodlust kill, nobody's going to eat through the trees. He's going to be fine. And now the Hellborn team may try to turn things around, actually. Uh, I know they're not. They're going to just spread out. But yeah, I was wondering about that. No I one used them. a vulnerability. I was watching it the whole time. I was like, oh, they're going to use a vulnerability. It'll be fine. Nobody used it, and it died. That's huge. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> really huge. Just the, especially the gold that you get on top of it. Yeah. Oh, man. Look at Bubbles. 557 gold already. <laughs> After his, he's already like a bottle. I mean, he's going to go one creep and have his bottle. <laughs> It showed for a second, though, that he had 10,000 gold per minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still way up there, but obviously going down quickly. But, yeah, that's, uh, again, he's going to have his bottle after one creep, so that's going to, it is going to be him versus Polywar Priest middle, but Bubbles, that's going to help him big time here. Yeah, yeah and matchup. definitely, and, like, Polywar Priest is, isn't going to be able to get a bottle unless someone goes back to base to buy him a courier. Um, ooh, that's just got a sting. Also, if you look at his items, he went for a fast bottle build, which is, like, insult to injury. Yeah. Uh, he didn't get very many, very many items. He only has, you know, the two minor totems, a mark of the novice, and a health potion, so... Yeah, there's the bottle being delivered. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Um, you're right, though. I'm focusing so much on Bubble, but, yeah, Polywire Priest, he will, even if, when, if he gets the 600 gold, he can't have it delivered to him because of the lack of courier, so... Unless somebody dies, I mean, Behemoth or Glacius are going to have to go back and buy a courier here. Do you think they need to? Is that like, is it that important? Do they need to just be running back right now, getting a courier? Um, they have the gold well, here the other problem is they don't have gold, yeah. so <laughs> they can't even do it. I, I think Plywall is just going to have to, unfortunately, wait it out and you know go back to base and get it himself. Also, because when you have this tri lane up here, you, they're going to have to have those heroes up top. They can't leave them. Uh, because if they get ganked by Tempest, uh, they're screwed. That's one of the things about trying laying long lane, is um, you're very, you're per very set into staying up there. You cannot leave your your teammate long lane. You can leave them if they're short lane. Like if they're, they're trying lane uh, short lane and they've left to go gank, Dark Lady can fare uh, well bottom, but not top. So it's a very different, uh, very different way of playing it out. Yeah. Well, we see uh, so far. So again, we'll keep that in mind. He just about has 600 gold. Um, but again, uh, not going to be able to get that bottle to him, even if he does purchase it here in the near future. So, uh, top lane, though, take a look at the Kree farm, see how things are going for this tri lane versus pseudo tri lane. You got a Dark Lady 5 and 6 compared to a 6 and 0 Forsaken Archer. So, Yolim here on Forsaken Archer, managing not to do too shabby uh, at this top side here against uh, the Dark Lady tri lane. As you say, you know, having the presence of Tempest in the jungle nearby. Could also be helping with some things and making uh, the Legion team play, play very cautious. But you do see Glacius heading back to base right now. Uh, he's most likely going to buy a courier right here. And uh, it's only going to be a ground courier, though, unless, I guess, a behemoth upgrades it. So, yeah, it should, be, uh, should make it. In fact, there we go. So it's a flying courier. It's going to be a bottle delivered, I'm sure, to Polybog Priest as soon as possible now. But, again, that's that, that got delayed by a good minute, two minutes, or about maybe about a minute and a half even. But as small as that sounds in time, that, that's a big deal. Here early on in this game, you already got a haste room bottled up on Bubbles. Um, and speaking of that, Bubbles 14 and 3 compared to an 11 and 1 Polywog Priest. So even Bubbles winning the Creep Farm here in the middle lane. Yeah, and just it kind of just gets your motivation and morale down just a little bit. You're like, oh my God, I cannot believe we lost our career. Yeah, I've been through it before. It's awful, uh, but it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You still bounce back from it. It just makes things a little bit more difficult. Yeah. So, unfortunate start for them, but again, there's still plenty of game left to be played. So you just got to like, let it go and then move on with your life. Electrician versus Jerzy at the bottom lane. Uh, again, just to kind of recap how the creep scores are going. 18-5 and five Electrician, 12-4 and four Jerzy. Now, Jerzy did end up buying a hatchet as well as even a mana battery uh, from the side shop here. So he eventually gets that hatchet to kind of assist with some last hits. But you see Electrician already with some boots himself, and you see Jerzy, as soon as he pushes up, the energy absorption used and the uh, harassment coming out. So, yeah, a difficult lane as expected down here for Jerezai at the bottom side. Yeah, especially when you can steal your mana um, on a hero like Jerezai who definitely needs that mana. 
So that's a very good rap matchup for Revy playing that electrician. Yeah. I think he's going to have a good time. And yeah, like we see already, he's a top farmer on his team. Although the top farmer in the game will have to go to Tempest as he is in the jungle. And Bubbles is doing very well mid because of that early start. Yeah. As well as the uh, extra gold that he got from the career kill. And now he's picking up a regen bottom. Using that haste rune is a great rune to get the, the next rune if you save it. Uh, which he did decide to do. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a little interested in this top lane, how this is going to go. Uh, they do have a ward here blocking their main pull. Um, so if Tempest does decide to gank, he cannot gank from the top side as he will get spotted. But I think Tempest is just, you know, content and doing his own thing in his jungle. I mean, he's hitting levels very quickly. He's having a good jungle. He's farming very well. So, um, and actually, he already hit level six. Yeah, but I mean, as you see right here, too, actually at the top rune spot, there's also another ward from the Legion team. So really, it'd be very difficult for Tempest to come over here without the Legion team spotting him. Um, in terms of a, a gank attempt. So yeah, he's level 6, though, as you mentioned. He's actually doing a very good job here in the jungle. I believe he just finished his Ring of Sorcery, even. Uh, he's currently just sitting on tel or Market Novice, but um, that uh, will be delivered to him as soon as possible. The Pickle Brain's on the Courier. It's just a matter of actually finishing the Talisman, which I believe, again, yeah, it's now on the Courier. So Ring of Sorcery, about 5 minutes. Not too shabby there. Start for him. Bubbles in the meantime in the middle lane. Good dive right here to Polywag Priest. The Kelfil comes out. The Saga of the Sea Nuke. And down goes Polywag Priest. You see Bubbles taking advantage of that regen rune. He had bottled up, set himself up in great positioning against Polywag, and eventually got the kill. So that's what I was going to say. You know, especially in that matchup, as it is most of the time in 1 versus 1 mid, that level 6, so important. Bubbles gets it first. Gets the Bloodlust kill, so... Super KGE, fantastic start for him now for this uh, Hellborn team in the 90s. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's really going to help things out for him. And uh, um, You know, Polly versus Bubbles is already kind of a weird matchup for Polly. Usually Polly just thrives so well. Actually, some initiation here on the Glacius. He will get taken out, so that's unfortunate. They uh, were able to only do it with two heroes. So yeah. this uh, Forsaken Archer in the Luna lane um, doing pretty well against this tri lane. Yeah, managing to, to hold her own there. Uh, again, uh, the creep farm not up there with Dark Lady, but still doing doing not too shabby. 220 gold per minute. Dark Lady though is 275 gold per minute about. She's farming 29 and 16, so not to get too far ahead. Agder playing uh, Dark Lady here for UNZ, uh, not doing too bad. Again, Dark Lady. Whenever we see that, very very scary. No, Polywalk Priest currently invisible and level six. He's coming up here in the jungle. If he finds Tempest, that is no doubt a dead Tempest. But you do see Tempest actually heading towards the middle lane. Even to set up a gank almost, but uh, Polywag Priest going all the way to the top side here. Going to try to get either Forsaken or Luna, but you see they're hugging the tower. They know that he got an invisible rune, and, uh, or, or at least something. So uh, they're mm -hmm. just going to play very defensively right here. So unless Polywag Priest wants to just barely go in tower range, he's not getting any kills. And he's wasting so much time doing this, so this is just very smart play here from the 90s. Yeah, um, that was a good play by Tempest. Uh, he knew it, it wouldn't be a very smart thing to stay in your jungle keep farming, because obviously... If Probably while Priest running around with an invis can ward trap you and kill you and pretty much immediately. So he's grouping up with Bubbles in the mid lane. Actually, they're going to get a tower push out of it. Probably while Priest is still looking to do something with it. Can he do it? He only has... No, invis is actually fading and they do get a tower kill on mid. Wow. So that's a really smart play by... Um, by 90s right there. Yeah, that again, you said great position by Tempest, but look at Dark Lady diving in. Onto Luna right here. Tainsel comes up. Uh-oh, but the crippling volley catches Dark Lady. War is going to be put down, but it does not trap Bubbles. He ports out, helps get the kill in Dark Lady. Kelfi is going to be used, and Glacius and Polywap Priest forwards to take the stun. Crippling volley will hit once again, and Glacius should end up falling out on the return. Damn it, on the Forsaken Arch right there. However, the power throw coming out, and Glacius will end up going down. Polywalk Priest and Behemoth is going to keep running away, and they should be fine when it's all said and done. Great turnaround kill at the end on a Forsaken Archer, but still damage done here by the Hellwind team. Excellent return fire as they took out Dark Lady, who dove big time here at this top tower. Yeah, that was a really sloppy dive, but a extremely good port there by Bubbles. I mean, it couldn't have been timed any more perfectly to uh, get that counter kills um, and counter initiation there. Extremely greedy play, though, I must say, by Jolin there, uh, running past the wards. You know, when he has um, agility, tr uh, agility Steam Boots activated, he only has 587 life. And, I mean, yes, he did get the, the snare from the volley on the Glacius, but he didn't even get the kill. In fact, he died before Glacius died. Yeah. So he didn't get the experience either. So pretty greedy. If, if he was a hero, say, like, uh, like a Luna, I'd say that's fine. But, you know, he's a carry hero, and he, need, he needs to stay alive. Yeah. So Forsaken Archer, again, the Steam Boots ring of the teacher already picked up, actually. So... Yeah, not really not a bad start for her at all. Now we're seeing this pushing power. Tempest already in the middle lane. 
Coming to the top lane, applying the pressure. Behemoth, good vision stun, though. And Forsaken Archer couldn't take the Morphling right there. In a lot of trouble. Tapis comes in with the ultimate attempt. It actually is canceled, though, by the Ice Prism. It didn't go off, though. He was definitely in the animation, as he's not going to start falling back here. And uh, will be fun. That was very interesting. Unless I just saw that incorrectly, but it looked like he was going to cast an ultimate there. But yeah. uh, ended up getting frozen and it actually didn't even go off. So in the end, everyone stays alive here at the top lane, including the tower. So again, one of those cases of no harm, no foul, really. But um, a good hold there by the Legion team even. Unfortunately, they didn't get the kill, though, because they were very close to one. So Dark Lady in the middle lane, a little bit of pressure. She's going to be fine, though. But how about Jerizine Electrician? They, they've yet to be involved here in this game as far as team fights. I mean, is that a big deal, do you think? Or? Um... I mean, Electrician really has nowhere to go, you know, when you think about it. It's like, he doesn't even have grip yet, so, and yeah. he, in fact, he didn't even max out his energy shield. He, uh, or his electric shield, sorry. He, and actually, he might get ganked right here. Bubbles comes in with the Kel field, as well as the stuns coming out from, uh, from Tempest there, and they will get a kill as Al, uh, Algae, I yeah, want to say. I think Algae, uh, yeah, playing that Jerzai gets the final kill. So yeah, he really has nowhere to go. He doesn't have grips uh, leveled, and though Plywild Priest did some counter initiation, we'll actually say counter pushing in the mid lane. He will throw the wards out, and that probably will be a dead tower. And the uh, 90s probably going to respond with their own tower push here in the bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, definitely thinking more along the line of Jerzai, even because especially you know with the decent levels that he has, decent farm could be very supportive for the team. But I mean, his team has been very successful without him. So the fact that he's been able to sit down here at the bottom lane and increase his farm just that much better. He will be in a little bit of trouble right here. He needs to make sure to get away. It looks like he's going to be fine. The tower is going to be put in deny range, though. That's a little bit unfortunate. So uh, UNZ will be able to easily deny it here and uh, take it out before the Hellborn team can. Now the tower is still dead, of course, but unfortunate that they couldn't get the kill when they had a mass push going on. So actually right there, UNZ, a pretty good exchange happening. They got the tower kill in the middle, and then... Uh, the deny at the bottom lane. Top lane, though, things could get a little bit more interesting again. Bubbles up here. He does not have a Kel field just yet, but he's currently invisible, sitting on top of really Behemoth and Dark Lady, kind of going off to the side. Bottom lane, though, while that's happening, Jerezai does get picked off by actually a 5 of 6, playing Glacius with the credit for the kill, but definitely some team effort right there. I'm really curious to see what Bubbles ends up doing right here. Oh, the Courier is here. Maybe I don't even snipe this if he really wants to. know. he's not <laughs> going to. Um, he does have kill field now. He needs. He probably is waiting for support though. Yep. To go for the kill, but I don't see anyone coming over on the mini map. So I don't know if that's gonna. Oh, there is actually. Okay, that is Tempest heading on over. So here we go. He's probably gonna open with the kill field even. There we go. With the kill field. There's the stun coming out from Tundra. The song of the sea nuke to make sure Dark Lady cannot charge sharks away, and the guaranteed kill. So very good patience there by Super KG. Yeah, definitely. That was a good kill and. Uh... He realized that even though he had everything up and he had an Invis rune and Dark Lady is only level 6, just doesn't have quite enough much firepower to get the kill on him on his own. So uh, good communication there, and Phil playing that Tempest over there um, was able to get some extra assist gold there. Yeah. Actually, sorry, he got the kill for yeah, it. Yeah, he so. got the kill, yeah. Oh, even better for him. Uh, portal key just purchased some bubbles. I thought I was even on Tempest, but we have bubbles even getting an early oh, portal wow. key. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What is that? A 12-minute portal key basically on bubbles. I mean, with 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 steam boots. Yeah. That's again. He's had a fantastic start. Let's start with that career kill. Oh, bottom lane static grip going to be used, but canceled immediately. The port's coming in, and all of a sudden, for second archer missing oh. with that crippling volley. Though piercing arrows, arrows attempt as a result not going to be successful, and both electrician and behemoth will be fine. So uh, at least they're able to survive, but. Big uh, big dive attempt. Does not come through, but back to the top lane. Again, Dark Lady in trouble. There's the Tempest Ultimate pulling her back in after the Song of the Sea Nuke. One more auto-attack do it, and yes, they get the kill on a Dark Lady. Actor just not having a good time. That is now three deaths for him, and his GPM still not bad, but it is dropping. So not good news here for this Legion side. Oh, Behemoth, what are you doing? Pushed up all the way here. He's actually in a lot of trouble. Uh, Jared's uh, trying to chase him down, and actually, yes, wow. we'll get credit for the kill. As oh, Bubbles jumping in, even Song of the Sea Cup a combination. Down goes Polywa Priest right there with the heal bomb. In the meantime, the top lane is being pushed in by Tempest. So UNZ, they just cannot get anything going right now, and it is looking ugly for them here early on. Yeah, and you know, this is the 90s team that I remember. I mean, this is a great team. It really is. They they know how to draft, and that's why I'm, I'm actually surprised. I'm, I'm going to go take it, you know, the liberty myself to go watch the games that they played against the QSQ. I forget the number of the team which they play because yeah. there's just so many, so many damn QSQ teams. But I'm going to have to watch that game and see um, see what happened because 90s, I mean, they're playing well right now. They're 
communicating well. Their draft is just working out perfectly for them, and uh, yeah, I really like I'm really like what I see from them. Yeah, definitely looking very, very good. Yeah, you're right. Um, again, on that note, as you're referring to, you know, obviously losing their first match here against one of the Q Squad teams uh, would be interesting to kind of take a look back and see how they ultimately fared. But um, here they are in uh, in game number one against UNZ, and they're looking fantastic. Uh, this is looking like uh, they're going to be going into game number two with uh, up one nothing. Of course, with that said, there's still uh, there's still time left for. UNC to attempt to make a comeback. They do have a Dark Lady, always a scary hero to play against. And, you know, their strategy coming into it, again, uh, 5 of 6 made it very clear, trying to just rice against them and ultimately outlast them. So in that sense, um, the game definitely isn't over, but um, it's going to be an uphill battle, no doubt, especially if the aggression keeps up here from the 90s, which I'd find it hard not to believe. Um, then that's just going to make life even that much more difficult. But Dark Lady, she does have her sustainer. Uh, another 650 gold saved up, so she's working on the Rune Cleaver. Um, she can manage to stay alive here now for these next five, six minutes and just continue to farm, then maybe things could be a little bit different. But no doubt an uphill battle, and getting a portal key on Tempest is not going to help the situation here for UNC, oh. as he just got right there. So team fight potential just went up tenfold now for the, for the 90s here. Yeah, let me just put it into perspective. Uh, I think when we casted Fnatic yesterday that Dark Lady... Um, had, I want to say it was a Rune Cleaver, Steam Boots, and then even an Abyssal Skull at this exact same time. Yeah. So, actually, uh, Initiation coming onto the Tempest, who's playing really far up, as well as the Polywog Priest hold. Aluna might be coming in to help him, but no, just a little too much. And good assistance from Glacius, playing, uh, played by 5 of 6 right there, as Louis does get the last hit. So that's a kill that they desperately need, and hopefully that will jumpstart something here for the UNT team. Yeah, no, you're right, though, of course, again, it is era, and, you know, that's something we just see so many times from them, but, yeah, that's a good comparison to make, because, obviously, you know, that's kind of the, the top-tier comparison, but still, a good comparison, the fact that he already has well, all those compared to a sustainer just only being had. What I wanted to say about that is that's the difference in the laning phase and, and how you lane things uh, yeah. differently. Um, it, you saw here an aggressive tri-lane, well, I could certainly say aggressive, but a tri-lane long lane, which is... Um, it's much more difficult on the Dark Lady because if the other two heroes do decide to leave or roam around like they should, that leaves the Dark Lady very susceptible to, to ganks and whatnot in her long lane. If it was a short lane, it's a much different story because she can sit back, the lane is closer to her tower, and she can still use that paint soul ability as well as the hatchet to get last hits yeah. uh, safely. So it's a very different setup when you, when you run something like this long lane. And I think nine times out of ten, we always see Dark Lady ran in a short lane try lane if they do decide to try lane. Yeah, very, very true. So, But Actor again, doing what he can to kind of recover here. As you said, a very important kill happening on Tempest. you got to wonder what uh, Phil was thinking a little bit right there. Uh, playing that Tempest, pushed up as far as he was. You know, maybe that he just got his portal key, figuring he could PK out before he got jumped. But obviously that wasn't the case. So just a good kill coming up from UNC, but still a little bit of ways to go. And speaking of that, team stats overall, 9,000 experience lead, 8,200 goal lead here in favor of the 90s. You see four of the five heroes grouped up here in the middle lane, including Tempest, who's kind of pushing the middle here by himself. Jerezai off to the side, who, oh, by the way, is doing pretty well himself. Goes to Marcho's Ring of Sorcery, and I think I just saw an Astrolabe purchase, and it's for LG. So, yeah, it is for uh, Jerezai. So, he also is just going really pure support, as you'd almost expect here on this Jerezai. Now, Forsaken Archer joining as well. Um, who just purchased her Firebrand recently, actually. And they're going to make a little bit of a push right here. Of course, Behemoth coming in. That's what he's good at, just stalling the push as long as possible. Throws out a yep. Pidger Stun. And going to screw things up a little bit, but it's not going to sway them too much. And the tower will continue to drop right here. Aluna off to the side. Bubbles and Tempest, both of those portal keys. They're just waiting for the prime time right now. It's going to be coming up shortly here. Protector Charm on the Tempest right there. So can he find that mark? Is he going to go in? There we go. The triple Tempest ultimate coming out. Wow. Jira's not going to throw a heal bomb right on top of likely. He's going to use the Souls Blessing on top of that. Electrician's going to start falling. Double tap already coming out for Super KGE. Phil picks up the kill right there. And just like that, Dark Lady is still farming the top lane while this is going on. Of course, she's the sole survivor, but not even interested in coming to assist the team. Now, she did use her ultimate right there, and I believe it did hit. Remember, it's not global anymore, but still is able to get it off. But didn't matter. The 90s is going to run through right now, and they may even get racks right here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you said that Dark Lady wasn't in the fight. It, it, it seems like that's like, what are you doing? You need to do a fight with your team, but... Honestly, there's really no business that or UNT really has no business in, in fighting team fights here. It, that's the strength of this Hellborn lineup. Is there? No, actually, some counter initiative coming out. The wards will be dropped. Tempest might get away though. Actually, 
and the uh, good glacial downpour is doing a lot of damage and uh fa will get taken out there jared's are trying to heal it's a counter initiation coming out from tempest stuns and auto attacks coming out galore and he will fall so glacius does get taken out there by super kg uh wards are down there trying to farm them but um uh, I don't know, 90s is looking really good here. I don't know if you saw that right there, but the wards actually screwed Dark Lady there. She got trapped by the wards. She got, she oh, got no. ward trapped by her teammate, and she buys back. <laughs> so a lot of gold spent right there. They're going to go for one for one more chance for initiation, trying to maybe hold it off a little bit longer. Well, you see the turnaround immediately happen. Down goes Dark Lady, down goes Behemoth. I expect those GGs to be called any second now. There's no way UNC is coming back from this. The lead is just too much at this point. And they, it's just not happening. The fact that everyone is still up here for the Hellborn team on top of it just adds insult to injury. So there we go. There's the vote to concede. And it looks like the 90s are just going to run on home with game one right here. Not uh, with quite ease, frankly. I mean, that was just a very quick and dominating victory in favor of the 90s right there against UNZ. Yeah, and uh, really well played by 90s. But uh, I, I, it just seems like 5 of 6 when we interviewed him. He had a game plan uh, and a strategy revolved around exactly what 90s just did this last game, which was um, some pretty early aggression, some good team, early team fight heroes. I mean, Jerezai is as early team fight as it gets. And, you know, you had Tempest in the jungle um, farming up a storm, and then as soon as he was able to get that level 6 and level 7, he used those minions, pushed mid, and, uh, you know, made the best out of it. And even though they didn't have the Ophelia, they still had that early aggression. And... Uh, I feel like UNZ could have played a little bit better. Uh, obviously, they could have laid the Dark Lady bottom. Uh, would have given him a much easier time to just kind of dodge fights. But, um, yeah, well played by 90s there. Yeah, that was uh, definitely a very dominating victory for them again. I believe we're on a 20-minute victory. It, it all started with that courier kill, remember, at the beginning of the game where Bubbles got. Yeah. He got it 